Hey, how's it going? Today, you are gonna learn how to get data from a CSV file using Java. I'm gonna make it super easy for you. On July 1st, I'm launching my own Java course. In this course, you'll become a confident Java programmer and you'll also understand Java really well. Learn more and join the waitlist in the link in the description. So let's get started on this CSV file reader by going to File New Java Project. We're gonna call it CSV. Hit finish and then we're gonna throw a class in here call it CSV reader, the main method, and we're all good to go. So you probably associate the term CSV file with Excel. You might be looking at the spreadsheet and you might be like, well, how does that turn into a file? Basically, I'll explain this with comments here. So a text file might look like this. This is a file dot 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 with another line somewhere, blah, blah, blah. CSV stands for comma separated values. So instead of text, like a text file, we'd have little values here and there separated by commas. So we might have 45, Alex, dog, maybe a date. And then the next line would be similar data, but for a different entry. So 32, Dave, cats, like that. There can be small discrepancies in the formatting, but as long as they are separated by commas and the data matches each row and column, just like an Excel sheet, then we can read in a CSV file. So let's start by getting a file and reading that file into Java. Let's start blank and just get a file from the internet. Click the link in the description, scroll down and download this crime record CSV file. These are crime records in January of 2006 in Sacramento, California. We're gonna read this file in and store that data in Java. So we just click download, and this is the file we'll use. Next, we wanna make sure we know where that file is saved because that's what we're gonna put into Java to read the file, is the file path. So on Mac, I'm just gonna click show in Finder. On Windows, just open it in, in your Finder window. I'm gonna move this to my desktop for simplicity. Now if I click on my desktop, there it is. Sacramento crime, January 2006.csv. If we open this up, um, I don't know if I can open it in Excel. I don't think I have Excel. I don't have Excel. If you open this up in Excel or Sheets, it would show the table with all this data. If you open it in a text editor, it'll show you the format that I showed. So I'll open it in text edit. At the beginning of this video, when I did the comments, this is what I meant. There's data separated by these little commas. And there's little formats here, but as long as it's separated by a comma, we can parse it, which just means go through it and store each chunk divided by commas. You'll notice the first one here is the column header to describe the data in it. So all the ones in this column are date time, all the ones in this column are addresses. Yeah, this is what we're working with. It's really big, but that's no problem for us because computers are really good at doing repetitive tasks. This would work with a small file or a large file. So let's go back to Java. We're gonna store our file path as a string so that we can pass it into an object we're gonna use later. So, so I'm gonna say string path is the path of that file. And for me, it is under users, Alex, desktop, boom. On Mac, you can just start by doing slash users, and on Windows, you might have to put a C colon slash and that full path to your file. You can click the little bar at the top with your file path, double click it, copy and paste that into here. Next, we're gonna go through this file using a buffered reader. On this channel before, we've used an object called scanner, which scans through input on in the console or input in a file, but buffered reader is a lot faster and more efficient. So we're gonna set it up just like scanner. Say buffered reader br equals new buffered reader, just like any other object. This is just gonna help us go through that file. Hover over it and import it. You'll get an underline here because this constructor needs a parameter inside of it. We can either add a reader object. <coughs> well, we can add a reader object or a reader and an int. We're gonna add a reader called file reader and we're gonna make it inside the constructor just cause it's easier. So we'll say new file reader to match the parameter. But now this, this file reader needs something in it. If we hover over it, well first we'll import it. 
And this file reader needs either a file, a file descriptor, or a string inside. And this refers to the path. This is the path that it's going to read from, which is what we have up here. So I'm just going to type path. Now, this needs to be surrounded by a try catch block, or the main method needs to throw an exception. This just means this code could go wrong if the file isn't found, and it wants to and it wants us to specify what to do when that happens. So we're just going to surround it with a try catch. We can click it, or you can just write it out like this. Basically, this is saying we're going to try to create this buffered reader and read a file from this path. But if the file's not there, for example, if there was a typo, then we would print the stack trace. So if I save and run this, nothing happens because we did the path because we created a path variable and then we tried to make this. Since we did make it and the file path was good, nothing printed out. But if we printed something like, we put a seven in here, then the path would mess up and it would print this exception on this code. So now let's actually use that buffered, re that buffered reader we just created. It's a lot like Scanner where you go through one line at a time. So we're going to infinitely go through this file. If you want to ever want to do something kind of infinitely or till the end, use a while loop. So we'll make a while loop. We're going to say while the next line is not null, take that line, parse it with commas, store that line, and then go to the next line. So to store a line, we actually have to create a variable. We'll just call it line and set it equal to nothing right now. We'll say that line is the buffered reader's next line. Read line. Well, that is not equal to null. Now, this is complaining because this could throw an IO exception. So we can just tack that on here to take care of it and replace this with IO exception. And then import that. Boom, red underlines be gone. Now, if it gets to this code, we would have stored that first line. So we'll print that out. We'll print out line. Save and run. And we didn't change this back to the correct path. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can kind of see more code. Okay, we'll run this now. And now we get all the data from that CSV file. If we look at the first entry, we see 2267. If we go back to the file, 2267 is not the first one, but that's because they were doing a lot and it probably took away the beginning one. We can test this by just putting a break statement in here to stop after the first one. And on the first one, we get that first line so we know it's starting where it's supposed to. I know this is one of the more complicated tutorials, but we'll just get it working. So instead of just storing the line, we wanna store all the individual data. So we can create a string array here that will be all the entries in that line. We'll call it values. And we can use a string method to split by the commas. So we can do line.split. This is a regular expression, but we can just put a comma here because it's pretty simple. Huh? I don't know how to type, guys. Now we have an array of all the values in that line. And we can print out just like an array. We can say values of zero, or values of zero plus values of one. Let's do values of zero. We'll run it. And this gets all the first values in that first column. If we wanted to do the next one, we could do one, and this would get all the values in the next column. Address. We start at zero because arrays start at zero. So if we wanted to format this a little nicer, we could say, I'll look at the thing first, so we could say date, and maybe um, we're only interested in the date and crime description. Okay, so we could do date and then put values of zero. And then we could also say crime description and then count the indexes. So start at zero. One, two, three, four, five. So this would be values of five. Cool. Save and run. And now all we get is the formatted date and crime description of the entries. And I think that is really cool. This would work the same way with a small file or a big file. I made a video on using scanners with this, 
but scanners can be kind of slow and buffered readers are a lot more optimized and big file friendly, but they essentially do the same thing. So I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit so you can kind of see all the code. I know some of the lines are pretty long, but it's not that bad. It's only really a few lines of code with some variables and then printing out exceptions if they happen. Now I'm gonna go through line by line to show you kinda how this all works. So let's click run again and we see all this stuff happens. Let's go through one by one. So first, we click run, we go into the main method. We make this string variable called path that's equal to the path of the CSV file that we downloaded. We made sure that the CSV file is separated by commas and formatted correctly. We have this variable line that's set to nothing. Next, we come into a try catch block. So we're gonna try to do the code in here, but if something goes wrong, we're going to print out the error on the exception that happens. But nothing's gone wrong yet, so we're gonna try this first line. This is the format for creating a new object, and this is the buffered reader object. Since we see an import statement at the top for buffered reader, we technically have the code to make the buffered reader work. To create one, you have to pass in a reader object into the constructor, but we didn't have a reader object. So we created one right here, new file reader. File reader is a type of reader, so it works, and it'll read in this file how we want. To do this just takes a little extra Googling, yeah, a little extra Googling to figure out what to do. Then this file reader constructor needs a string or something else. We put in our string path to make this constructor work. So we have a, a buffered reader, which is like a more efficient scanner that'll read through the file for us. Since the path is found on the computer, we don't throw a file not found exception and we keep going. The next piece of code is this while loop. Whenever you see a while loop, know that it'll go until the end of something. So we're gonna read one line and store it into that line we created. If that line is not null, then we know we have a line. If something goes wrong here, it would catch an IO exception because read line can throw an IO exception. But we're all good, we read in the first one, so we can create a string array called values that splits that line by commas comma separated values, we can split the line by commas. This is a string method that we're just gonna use on that line. Now we have all those values from that one line and we can print out in a little formatted way the values we want. We can get values of zero, which is the date, which is the first comma, and we can also get the crime description, which is that fifth column, or well, technically sixth because indexes start at zero. So that's how we get this first line. Next, we go back to the top of the while loop we do the exact same thing for the next one, and we go all the way down really quickly and efficiently because Buffer Reader is quick and efficient, all the way down to the end of the file. When it hits the end of the file, br.readline is equal to null, so it breaks out of the while loop, and then that's the end of the program. Nothing else happens. We technically end up here, since we're not trying anything anymore, we don't have to worry about catching anything anymore. We're at the end of our program. I hope you enjoyed that video on reading a CSV file in Java. Thank you for letting me teach you, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.